Hey everybody, welcome to Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ram. And I'm Noelle McFly, and it is Wednesday. It's Wednesday, right? May uh, 6th, uh, it's the day yeah. after Cinco de Mayo, so if you guys are just waking up, um, you're probably, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you gotta get to class, because it's almost the uh, finals week, this is the last week before yeah. finals week, last next week, week. Cool. are you excited yeah. for that, Noelle? Oh yeah, I'm so excited, I cannot wait to be done, yep. I'm so ready. I'm so tired. <laughs> and of course, it, it wouldn't be morning without a little bit of coffee. And I have a little <laughs> video to show about that. Harvey, want anything special for your birthday? Just a decent cup of coffee. You're kidding. I'm serious. Honey, your coffee's undrinkable. It's pretty harsh. Well, so's your coffee. You know, the girls down at the office make better coffee on their hot plates. Well, see you later. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to show that because it was ridiculous. It's horrible. You make terrible coffee. I'm not going to drink those coffee, girls yeah. at the office coffee. <laughs> girls at the office coffee is delicious. It's sweeter. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. <laughs> so there's it, 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 it turned it from a jerk to like passive aggressive jerk. It was, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and of course, um, the weather. <laughs> and, uh, speaking of... Um, you know, oh, yeah, what's the weather, Scott? Oh, the weather's going to be, uh, again, it's going to be teasing showers today. Um, yesterday was really windy. Oh, it was overcast, but it didn't up. really rain as much, especially in the valley area. But you can expect a high into the 64 degrees today. It is currently 31 degrees outside. It's going to get warmer. The sun just peaked over the mountains. And, yeah, I mean, by Thursday night, it's going to be partly cloudy. But, of course, this whole week, it's going to be... Um, well, just kind of showing like, us it might shower, overcast. Yeah. It only says twenty percent chance of rain. So. I say go outside, anyways. Just you you do know, it. like if you yeah. want to, like bring a nice light spring coat. Oh, we're all about it's coats like on spring. this show. If you guys can't tell, Scott and I love our coats. <laughs> Today is a nice light coat. Maybe like a sweater <laughs> or something. Maybe a sweater. Maybe a light sweater. Yeah. No of, gloves, no mittens. But of course, uh, <laughs> we do have two guests we're going to bring on yes. in a little bit. Of course, I do want to um, talk a little bit about what's happening on MCAT tonight, live mm -hmm. from our um, website. If you um, want to... Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. You guys all know John Krakauer's book, John Missoula. Krakauer is in town in yes. Missoula mm -hmm. after he wrote the book. And he is giving a talking to a panel tonight at the Double Tree um, at seven. At seven. So we'll be live streaming that from our MCAT channel, yes. Local Live. So here is the website. We, go if you go to video on demand, mm -hmm. you go to Local Live, and then you just have to click on this little button right here, and it should stream the video. But we're not streaming right now, so there's nothing to show. Yeah, it'll happen. It'll happen at seven p.m. tonight. Or you could go and yell at him. Yeah, and you, ask a question. Well, I, it would be good. It would be good streaming television. It would be yeah. just great to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, if you're a high school student and you're actually watching this, um, <laughs> you um, there's the high school um, film festival that's coming oh, in, yeah. the Western Montana High School Film mm -hmm. Festival, and the end date is the 18th of May. Oh. Okay. And um, there's gonna be a pretty big premiere with all the uh, high school kids with over a thousand, twelve hundred dollars worth of cash and prizes to these kids. I mean, what are they even going to do with that money? Uh, you I'll guys don't pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> uh, well, they can donate it to a good cause because Give Local was last night. Say yes. segue. The Give Local um, was a great opportunity for people to donate. Mm -hmm. It's too late to donate to Give Local, but you can still donate to your nonprofits by logging on to your favorite nonprofits website. And just give them money. At nonprofitwebsite.org. Dot org. <laughs> Nonprofitwebsite.org, of course. Oh, it's always some kind of dot org or dot net. <laughs> Whatever. Um, of course, um, I do want to show what's new on MCAT tonight and tomorrow night mm -hmm. happening on MCAT. So... Um, and then when we come back, we'll bring out our two guests, Stefan and Luke. Yep. And they're Talk with about um, Blue Sky Stewardship. Blue Sky yeah. Stewardess, right after this. And at Judge Browning's memorial service, his former clerk, Judge Chen, spoke for all of us in describing the enormous pride we feel every time we walk into the San Francisco courthouse that bears his name, the James R. Browning United States Courthouse, Jim Browning's Courthouse, everyone's castle. But most of those genes we can get rid of. We can supply their products from another source uh, if they're absolutely necessary or maybe they aren't necessary. And so you can prevent, you can, sorry, replace the virus's genes with genes you care about. And that's what you do when you use viruses as an agent 
for gene therapy. After uh, the attacks was everybody lining up in their bookstores and going and buying a copy of the holy book of Islam, the Quran. And as people were buying the copies of the Quran, one brave reporter finally asked that unavoidable question. Where are you? Why are you going into the bookstore? We are buying. What are you buying? A copy of the Quran. Why are you buying a copy of the Quran? Because we want to find out why they hate us. Hey, we're back here with uh, Luke, uh, Luke and Stefan. Right? Did yep. I say that right? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> and they're so here from, to talk about... Yeah, Blue Sky Stewardship. And so, will you guys give us an overview of what Blue Sky is? So we're a local food nonprofit, and we have a triple focus of education, localization, and agriculture. Cool. In short. Huh, cool. cool. So, um, you guys, um, what do you guys do for the community? Well, I would think in terms of, he mentioned our triple focus. For me, it's the focus I'm most excited about, he said agriculture, is that is that focus. The, the getting out and, and getting our hands dirty and getting more food in Missoula because we're importing a huge amount. And it's pretty, there is there are great efforts, but we still fall short. We're still importing too much. So yeah. um, I think that will be the biggest um I guess aspect of what we do in terms of education or in terms of community outreach. And how did you guys come up with this idea for starting this? We were sitting around and we were all kind of assessing the various issues that we're faced with as people in this day and age and there, there's such a humongous list and we eventually decided to keep our focus in a proper channel to just bring it down to food. I mean food mm -hmm. relates to so many other issues and we all are passionate about good, healthy food, and so we thought, let's just start where we can on that issue in Missoula, where mm -hmm. we live, and just that, that that way we had the narrowest and kind of shortest focus that we could densify our energy within. Awesome, awesome. Cool. And so what education programs do you guys do? Well, we've split it up into three different projects. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Learn is the program. That's one of the three programs that we have. And the three projects therein are classes, workshops, and then our free source library. So the class is really just meant to bring people into our office building and do kind of an academic exchange of information. Workshops are out in the field, really getting your hands dirty and teaching people valuable skills, learning ourselves in the process. And then free source library, that's where we share everything that we produce as an organization, openly for free. Yeah, and so that last part, the free source library, that's sort of our way of uh, thinking globally and acting locally mm. you know it, and, yes. and it, if we can make something and it works even in missoula with the internet and with that global outreach we can avail that to whoever and, and yeah. they can try it for themselves yeah awesome awesome so. And so tell us about your Give Local yesterday, because you guys were at the Give <laughs> Local um, at Karis Park yesterday, right? Yes. So how did that go? I thought it went great. Luke was there towards the end of the day, more I think when a lot of the activity happened. I saw uh, maybe 10 trees being given. So we were actually giving away plums and apricots and aronia berries, oh, awesome. which I thought that was a really cool interactive experience. And we got to send people away with a future potential to make food for themselves, which I love the idea. Of, but why don't you talk a little more about what else we did? Well, I think that was the um, just connecting heart to heart with other organizations because there were a lot of organizations there, um, and and the people that came by, um, it's kind of oh we're we we're here we exist now mm -hmm. and then you know I think the giving away of trees was really um, that, that's that is our focus really in terms mm -hmm. of agriculture is the perennial side. Mm -hmm. And so you said learning and you have workshops and classes. Um, can you tell me when your guys' next um, workshops or classes are? Sure. We're going to be doing a grafting workshop fairly soon. Yeah. It's kind of an indefinite time because it's largely based on the <coughs> schedule of a fellow who lives up in Kalispell Evergreen area. But that'll be within the next few weeks. And then we kind of have a rolling schedule of classes going. I just did one on fermentation, uh, fermented Sweet. beverages in particular. Cool. And we're, we're just going to be filling up the schedule right now that we're we have a very heavy paperwork focus, unfortunately, which takes away from some of our creative capacity in the, the educational realm. Thank you, IRS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what um, what scope of um, 
learning? And, um, what, what scope of teaching do you guys do? So there will be us getting up in front of people and teaching about subjects that we're familiar with, but we also want to bring in other people who are experts in their fields into both our classrooms and the workshops, right? And then ultimately just, we, we want to share everything. I want to make that really clear that we don't have any desire or intention to hoard information. Anything we make, business models, financial models, grants, other applications, uh, logos, proposals, we want to just put that out as it is. No holds barred, no redactions on our website to the public so anyone else could copy it and you know run with it. And try it themselves. I mean, granted, That's we're, not, all about. we're not a publicly traded company on the right. Dow. We have the luxury of being a nonprofit that isn't necessarily competing for resources. So um, I will I will say that maybe that's part of the reason why more companies aren't as um, as sharing in their internal documents, etc. But yeah. um, we really want to be doing that and making it so hmm? everybody has access to what, what yeah. we're doing. Um, so, where can people get more yeah, information? <laughs> www.blueskystewardship.org. We also have a Facebook which is facebook.com slash blue sky stewardship. Cool. cool. Is there anything else you like, you like to say? Anything well, that I haven't really touched on? Well, we, we didn't talk at all about our Unite program. That's mm -hmm. one of the things that we're most excited about. So yeah, we talked a lot about the agriculture stuff and we talked about education, but the program that unites the two mm -hmm. is about kind of localizing the economy here in the realm of food. And one of the ways we want to do that is utilize cargo bicycle technology to pick up food waste and deliver food in kind of a closed circle to keep a lot more of the organic matter and energy contained within Missoula because that brings with it money and mm -hmm. human activity, culture, excitement, happiness. Cool. That's awesome. Well, it sounds like you guys are doing a lot for our community. Thanks. That's great. We're trying. Yeah. yeah. You'll know, see. Yeah. yeah. And then when did you guys start? When did Blue Sky start? It was at the end of October was when we officially submitted for... Cool. You know, being recognized as a corporation by the state of Montana. Awesome. But I suppose we're on our eighth month of real development at this point. And so we're excited to have some real milestones reached by this upcoming October. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, well thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Scott. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Noel. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We'll be right back, everyone. <laughs> But of course, you can find out more information about Wake Up Missoula by logging on to our website at wakeupmissoula.com slash dot wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. <laughs> yes. The Wix is between Wake Up Missoula and the dot com. Yes. You can also like us on Facebook as well as Wake Up Missoula on Twitter. You can also like Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter as well as on Facebook. And MCAT has its own website at www.mcat.org yep. where you can live stream all of our videos, find out what's going on in in around MCAT, mm -hmm. see new programming. And you and learn how you can how you too can get involved with the Missoula Community Access Television. Yeah. All that where great Where we stuff. train you how to use camera equipment and do your own shows like we're doing right now. And it's super cheap. It's only yep. twenty dollars a year, yep. right? And then yeah. of course there's a first time orientation fee of twenty dollars so it's Forty dollars. Yep. But or you can so volunteer cheap. out of it. Yeah. yeah you can just and you volunteer. can come in and use any equipment that you want, as long as you're nice to it. <laughs> I really think that's a great thing. We do great work here. <laughs> I love us. <laughs> and uh, orientation is every second Tuesday, uh, second Wednesday of the month at five thirty. Okay, yeah. So you can expect to see that a week from today. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so come on down, everyone. Yep. But up, up next, we've got some events. So this is our events for today, Wednesday. Um, so this morning, starting at 9.30, is Family Fun Time at Minnesota Gymnastics. Open gym for ages walking to 12 years. Um, they just have obstacle courses, trampolines, foam pits, you know, stuff you can fly off of. 
five dollars for members. I got eight dollars for non members. I like how you describe that. You just fly off. Of well, stuff. that's what I imagine. Like I imagine some kid like People swinging just, like, on a bar. Yeah, just like <laughs> into a foam pit. <laughs> that's what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> so at eleven um, a.m. this morning, a bit of gymnastics is preschool playgroup. That is for ages walking to five years. Uh, it's only from eleven to twelve, and so parents and children get to choose which activities and stations they want to do, and then they'll move around the gym. And I'm sure they're all really, really fun. And you could fly again. It's just so much flying at those gymnastic places. Children's Museum of Missoula has got family yoga from 11 to 11.30 today. The Missoula Public Library, they've got a geneolo genealogy, that was hard, genealogy research presentation starting at 12.30 today. And you can learn about the library's resources for in genealogy, including, but not limited, to Ancestry.com. Um, yeah, so that starts at 12.30 today. Cool. Middle school writers, if this is a writing group for ages 6 through 9. This is every Wednesday from 3.30 to 5.30, um, 3.30 to 5 at the Missoula Public Library in the boardroom. And so this is for kids that want some feedback or want to give some feedback and play games, and then they have chocolate too, which of course is the best. <laughs> Spectrum Discovery Area, they have got their after school program back called Sci Girls. This is put on by Girl Scouts of Montana and Wyoming. And so it's a focus on technology, uh, robotics, digital movie creation, 3D printing, and more. Uh, you can earn a Girl Scout fun patch too if you are a Girl Scout and you do this. I don't think it's limited to Girl Scouts though. So Sci Girls, Sci is short for science. Science Girls. And Girls is short for. Girlation. Girlation Established Interiorism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew that, but that's the scientific That's what word. girls stand for. <laughs> um, okay, so this program meets every Wednesday in May from 4 to 5.30. Um, and you can call Spectrum 728-STEM. Um, so that is, again, 728-STEM. And the class cost is $40. But it seems pretty reasonable, you know, if you get your kid there every Wednesday after school. Um, Kearns Aquatic Center, they are hosting their Mobash Skate Clinics. Now that the snow is gone, the skate park is up and running with lots of people. Mm -hmm. And so they Wait, 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 wait. The snow can't be gone because it was never here. Never came. I thought, actually, that was running through my mind as I was saying that. As I was saying that, I was like, wait, we never got snow. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Noel and McAvoy. So, um, this is for kids that um, are new to the sport or want to learn, already have some skills but want to refine them. So they'll have skate pros on st on site. They'll instruct on technique and style. Um, all equipment is provided. So it's every Wednesday starting May 6th from 4 to 5.30, ages 5 to 14, uh, $24 for a non-resident and $20 for a city card holder. So I think... Yeah, and yeah, the only way you can get a city card is if you bring a piece of mail with your name and your uh, Missoula area oh, resident address. It's really simple. Oh, they cool. don't really like. And so the, in that set, the Kearns McCormick. Yeah, park, you go to Kearns Aquatic city. Center. That's where the Parks and Rec and all this yeah. stuff is. Oh, interesting. It's like a multi-purpose building now. Very cool. Well, you guys, if you ever want to get a city card, just do that piece of mail down to uh, the Parks and Rec office that is by Kearns Aquatic Center in McCormick Park. And you can get um, money off of stuff. That's cool. All right. Top Hat Lounge has got their live recorded shows of fish. This is every Wednesday starting at 4.30. This is their fish-themed happy hour. It's got an audio show, video, and more. This is a free show, and it's all ages until 9. Community Unite is at the Northside Kettle House Tap Room. It is for Bike Walk Missoula. And every 50 cents from each pint sold will go to the organization of the night. The Starving Artist Community Open Mic is at 3020 South Reserve Street. They have an open mic starting at 6 p.m. tonight. Um, and so whether it's music or comedy or short stories or anything, any type of art um, that can be on an open mic, they've got it tonight, 6 p.m. Sign up, start at 6, and they're going to go ahead until once they have all the names. Socrates Cafe is at the Missoula Public Library starting at 7. This is an informal yet intelligent conversation um, of topics relating to the core areas of philosophy. It's free. It's open to anyone that just wants to come and chat. So it's from 7 to 9 in the boardroom tonight at the Missoula Public Library. It meets the first Wednesday of each month. Yeah, country dance lessons with instructor Kathleen Clark. <laughs> is at the Sunrise Saloon at seven. She ta Wednesday she ta teaches country swing, and then Thursday night she's got um, square dancing. I do believe. Yeah, 
And then the Missoula Public Library, they have got a movie tonight. It's called Own the Change, Worker Co-op Documentary. And so it's a short documentary um, about meant to give an overview of what a worker co-op is, how it can transform lives and communities, and the realities of starting one. And so you can watch as they go through concrete steps for building economic alternatives um, by creating worker-owned um, cooperatives. Hmm. Yeah, so that'll be at the Missoula Public Library at 7 tonight. That's a movie. Um, and it's free, of course. It always usually is. And as I've been talking about, the Andy Warhol um, exhibit is here at the M Missoula Art Museum. And so they are teaming up with the Roxy Theater, and it's called Warhol and Cinema. This is going to be put on May 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th, so all month. And, and so they're going to be showing a, a few movies from Andy Warhol's fi experimental film time period that he went through. <laughs> His so, whole life is experimental. Yeah, so he did some view. movies. And so they're going to be showing them this entire month, starting at 7 at the Roxy. Did you get a chance to go to the Missoula Museum and saw, see his pictures? Not yet, but it's there it is, until... It's just delightful. Is it cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, they're there until There's so August many. 15th. There's yeah. so many pictures. Yeah. So many. They're there until August 15th. So if you guys don't haven't been able to see it recently, go. Yep. And I'm gonna go the BAM is free. Yeah. It's a nonprofit, just like us. Mm-hmm. All right, and then my last event for tonight is Shrek the Musical has started. This started last week, um, and it's at MCT Center for Performing Arts. It's class cost, or class cost, cost is $19 to go Ooh. check it out. Yeah, a little steep, but yeah. it's going to be great. I have heard a lot of great reviews, and we had Joe Martinez on our show a couple weeks ago, and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure it's going to be good. But that's what I've got for today. Up next, we've got Musical Notes with ASAP. All right, Asaph. All right. This will be relatively short. We're talking about a famous trumpeter from the past name Al Hurt. I don't think very many people will remember him. He was born 1922, American trumpeter, band leader, and he's best remembered for two songs, a song called Java, J-A-V-A, -A, and, of course, the theme to the Green Hornet, um, the original Green Hornet with uh, Bruce Lee. He did the music to that. And uh, he was nicknamed Jumbo and the Round Sound of Music, inducted into the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame in 2009. Cool. And it just shows still pictures of him. Yeah. Um, he's, he's the son of a police officer. Well, we seem to get a lot of uh, artists that are born in the police families lately. And some military, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Anyway, he was given his first trumpet at age six. And, uh, you know, from a pawn shop of all places, he was in the uh, junior police band and made his professional trumpet debut at age 16. Can you imagine that? 16 cool. years old. Yeah. He went on to go to the uh, Cincinnati, Ohio Conservatory, and he studied under Dr. Frank Simon, who was an actual soloist for John Philip Sousa. Wow. Isn't that something? The John Philip Sousa. Yeah, the John like, Philip Sousa. Because John Philip oh. Sousa, he died in like the 19th century. Well, they kind of kept the uh, orchestra going, and there were a few, I guess, surviving members at Oh, that yeah, time. yeah, yeah, definitely. And so Al Hurt got the opportunity to study with one of those surviving members. Nice. He also had a top 40 hit called Sugar Lips. <laughs> 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 and, of course, when the movie Bill, uh, Kill Bill came out, they used his re recording of Flight of the Bumblebee again, the Green Hornet. Oh, nice. And finally... In 1970, during the Mardi Gras parade, he was injured while riding on a float. History says, and we don't know if it's true or if it's fictitious, but history says somebody threw a brick at the trumpet oh. while he was playing and crushed his lip. So it took him time to recover from that, and eventually he did. And uh, then in 1987, he was given the opportunity to play for Pope John II during his visit to New Orleans with his version of Ave Maria on the trumpet. Oh, nice. And finally, we lost him in 1999 at the age of 76. So he must have had quite an interesting life as a trumpet player yeah. to play, yeah. for the, play for the Pope. From John Philip Sousa to the Pope, you might say. Mm -hmm. Cool. So cool. that's my story on Al Hurd. Cool. Thank cool. you. Thanks, yeah. Asaph. Sure. That was musical notes. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. Thank you. Cool. And then, so did it say how long you played for the trumpet? What was his, yeah, career span? Probably from age 16 to the time he passed in 99, so yeah. that'd be pretty much his entire life. Cool. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Asa. Sure. All right. So up next, we've got events for tomorrow. Okay, so if I accidentally say today, disregard that, because that happens. Okay. 
So tomorrow at 8 a.m. is Domestic and Sexual Violence in Faith Communities. This is put on by Superior United Methodist Church. And so this is a full day workshop that will provide faith leaders, advocates, and community members with skills to partner together to address domestic and social, sexual violence. Um, training is free and lunch is provided. Um, and so for more information or to register, you can contact Mary Furlong at 274 eight nine six one again it's two seven four eight nine six one and so check that out if that sounds like it's something interesting to you it looks like it's being put on through the city of missoula because mm -hmm. that's their email is m furlong at co.missoula.mt.us yep yeah so tiny tales is happening at the missoula public library starting at 10 30 tomorrow this is for ages of uh, babies through 36 months which is three years and they sing songs and nursery rhymes and hear stories and just you know, have lots of fun baby time. And then, you know, the kids go crazy and run around. Yeah. Maybe slap each other. They're like, no, no, you have to be gentle. You can't slap. <laughs> Unless they really make you mad. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Maybe. All right. And then Missoula Public Library is hosting Read Dogs, which is my favorite event, from 3 to 4. This is at the Dragon Rug in the children's area. And so if you have trouble reading or don't have anyone to read to, you can come read to this reading education assistance dog. They're sweet. And, and I they bet just they're so down. Yeah, mm -hmm. they'll just cock their head a little bit. Huh? <laughs> but they'll, you know, they'll snuggle with you. Mm -hmm. I just love dogs. And then Lego Club is going on at the same time from 3.30 to 5, also in the Dragon Rug in the children's area. Um, the Lego and Duplo pieces are provided, and anyone under 12 has to have a parent with them. Clay Studio Missoula has their Teen Wheel Throwing 101 and 102 starting at 3.30 tomorrow. It's for ages 11 to 18 um, from 3.30 to 5.30 from May 7th to the 28th. And so it's a, um, young adults can explore their creative interest in ceramics, focusing on self-expression through throwing techniques. $100 per student, $5 discount for members. You have to pre-register. <laughs> so call 543-0509 or go to the ClayStudioOfMissoula.org. Kearns Aquatic Center, they've got their All Abilities Recreation League. This will probably be at uh, McCormick Park, most likely. And so this is uh, for everyone that's got all different abilities. So whether you're in a wheelchair or you are walking, that's for all of it, you know, everyone. Yeah, and so they've got specialized equipment to make the program more fun for people that have some disabilities. There's your war ropes course, fish, play sports, and much more. Starts at 4 p.m. Um, and so it meets Thursdays starting May 7th, 4 to 5. All ages are welcome, $24 and then $20 with the city card. You can call 721-7275 for more information on that or if you want to register. Kearns Aquatic Center is a go fish class. Um, so this is where they're going to cover the basics of fly rod and reel fly fishing in this four-week class. All fishing gear and bait is provided. Meets Thursdays from 4 to 5, ages 7 to 14, $24 or $20 with a city card. That will be at Currents Aquatic Center over at McCormick Park. We've got a couple wine tastings. There's a wine tasting at Tense Food Vineyard and Winery starting at 4. Um, the Children's Museum of Missoula, they don't have a wine tasting. <laughs> uh, a Kool-Aid tasting? Yeah, <laughs> it's elephant toothpaste. They're going to make a fun a science experiment that bubbles up to like a giant, look like a giant toothpaste foam. So wow. they call it elephant toothpaste. Oh, that's awesome. I remember yeah. seeing those. Those are crazy. Yeah, it and it looks like, like it's like engulfing you, but it's actually like really light and soft. Cool. But you look at it, it's like really, look, look, like it looks really like a opaque. big mess. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's neat. Yeah, so that'll be at the museum. Children's Museum of Missoula from 4 4 to 4 to 4 30 tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Apology Salish, accepted. I know. <laughs> Salish Kootenai College um, out in Pablo, Montana. That is 50, oh, I'm looking on 58 138 US Highway 93 out in Pablo. They are having a 2015 Community Bird Festival that starts at 4 30 tomorrow. So you can celebrate birds in science, tribal culture, and art. Uh, there's going to be bird themed information, stations, vendors, and crafts for purchase, live birds on display. Opening ceremony starts at 4.30, and there will be short bird films by the International Wildlife Film Festival. Cool. Yeah, that's at 4.30 tomorrow at the Salish Kootenai College. Sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And here's the other downtown drop-in wine tasting. That is at La Grotta Bella underneath the Old Post Pub on Spruce Street. It's a different theme each week, and there's a minimum of four wines, and the cost is $10, and you just pay it right at the bar at the Old Post. Meadow Sweet Herbs has got a home spa night. Um, this is from 5.30 to 7.30 tomorrow. 
and they're gonna you are going to be able to learn and enjoy details about how to treat yourself to spa treatments at home. Girl, so, treat yourself at home. At home, because it's cheaper and it's safer. <laughs> well, not necessarily. If you yeah, I guess spa treatments at home, you do it alone. The hot wax gets down ah! your throat, and you like. It yeah. like burns your throat and you and then die. All of a sudden, yeah, and then all of a you, you die. die. You do put, not do spa treatments with Scott at you, home. You, the cucumber can be a deadly weapon. <laughs> it's like you cut it too thin and then you slice your arm ah, up and like, ah. And you're bleeding and you got hot wax all cucumber. over Cucumber. And then like, those Epsom salts just like scrub away your skin and you're just... You, like the, the most trouble I have, like when I'm ordering food or whatever, I can never th um, think of ordering cucumber. <laughs> like it's like the word that just like gets blanked. It's oh, like really? uh, I'm at I'm at the place I'm at a, like a food place. I was like, okay, I'll have lettuce, tomato, um, that thing, mushrooms, <laughs> pineapple. <laughs> I know I like putting pineapple in everything. I do too, pineapple. And um. And then what? What is that other thing? What's that? It's a, it's a, that and then I point to it. Was it? You mean cucumber? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh. <laughs> well, here they'll be able to show you other things to the bin: cucumber, uh, facial ingredients, bath salts, detox treatments, and other fun products and techniques. Yeah. It's totally free, and you can bring your friends. That's, they say that on there, yeah. <laughs> Buy three or seven, they're dead, but sweet herbs tomorrow. Yeah. Um, or else you can go over to Scott's house and he'll just slice you with cucumbers. Because <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing is for sure is that everyone knows how to grow cucumbers. <laughs> and they're always at the farmer's market. No, like I go to the farmer's market, it's like cucumbers for miles. And yeah. it's like, oh, really? Oh, yeah. I don't think we have enough cucumbers. Uh, or, and zucchini. <laughs> zucchini's yeah, are like, zucchinis are good though. Like the easiest thing to grow. Ever. Bomb. All right, up next we've got a uh, good food store cookbook club. This is Murad Lahu, Lahu's New Moroccan. Um, this is at the good food store at 6.30 tomorrow. Class cost is $35. And so um, Murad Lahu is from Merkish, Morocco. He owns the only Mar Moroccan restaurant in America to receive a Michelin star. And he's recently received, released a cookbook. So Redbird chef Matt Cornette is going to introduce it this evening. They're going to make roasted beet avocado puree and pumpkin seed crumble, carrot soup and citrus salad with preserved lemons, bar berbere crusted scallops with cauliflower couscous, Jeez. grilled lamb cafeta with cilantro dressing and grapes. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So check that out, 6.30 tomorrow at the Good Food Store. Their Roxy Theater is showing their trash uh, for trip. It's Trash and Treasure Night. It's the first Thursday of every night, and so of every month. So they are showing Fast Times at Ridgemont High at the Roxy Theater tomorrow at seven. And you know, five the, bucks. the only time uh, um, Nicholas Cage cameo actually made sense. Really? Nicholas, Nicholas Cage is in there. He's barely in there. He's like there for five seconds, and he's like uh, works at a fast food restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but he's in every other movie now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, he's in all the movies. Cage. Well, did you see the latest movie he's in? No. I, but he looks so old. <laughs> I like, I know. Is that terrible? I don't know what it's called, but I just remember being like, wow. Well, like, if you watch so Con Air, it's just like, he doesn't look like, you know, like, all his movies, the movie Con Air is the only movie he where he doesn't look like Nicolas Cage. <laughs> like, every other movie, they look like Nicolas Cage. Con Air is so great because he doesn't look like Nicolas Cage. But he is Nicolas Cage. But he is Nicolas Cage. But that's <gasps> the most, like, you know, he grew his hair out long. <laughs> it's not slicked back, and it's not like, I'm Nicolas Cage. Yeah. I'm Nicholas Cage. Noel, I'm Nicholas Cage. And Nicholas Cage. I'm Nicholas Cage. I got snake eyes. Oh. Okay, anyways. <laughs> I'm on fire and my car is on fire. This is him driving. <laughs> we gotta kill the witch. <laughs> oh, no. I'm Nicholas. the wicker man. <laughs> Uh, oh man, okay, I've got one more event. I got Drew Barrymore event. in the for a brainy day. Yeah, <laughs> I love Drew Barrymore. <laughs> Go she on. was like 90s queen though. Her and Courtney Love, I guess, were like BFFs in the 90s. Ugh. Which doesn't surprise me. Uh, it does not surprise me. Anyways, you have great. one more event one and then I have event. to show a city council, not really city council, more of a city. Um, he has to show a city. Shitty, si <laughs> uh, city, um, <laughs> as I said. With a, yes. With an S-H by accident. Yes. By accident. But city. C-H. Yes. Chitty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm going to show that video in a little bit. Cool. Okay, so my last event is for tomorrow night at the Top Hat Lounge. There is Eugene's best psychedelic rock band, reggae rock band. They're called Soul Seed. They will be at the Top Hat Lounge at 10 p.m. tomorrow for free. 
Yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, check out MissoulaEvents.net. You can check out the newspaper. Check out the university events website. They always have a lot of stuff going on and the independent. Cool. Yeah. And when we come back from after this uh, city update mm -hmm. of our Missoula, I'll be talking about one of my favorite segments right after this. The overall goal for our Missoula is to develop a community plan that takes us into the future. We're planning for about a 20-year horizon, and we're trying to address how we grow and change while we can still manage to um, enhance and, and value the things that are really important to our community. A community that uh, provides great housing, great recreational opportunities, um, and, and of course the, the everyday amenities that we need for life, which uh, you know the uh, good stores, good restaurants, great great entertainment venues, and I think uh, Missoula offers all of those, but uh, you, we're always looking for a way to enhance that. Where we are at in the process is um, still refining the policy statements for the plan. We still also have to pull the entire document together, the, the information that provides background and some of the other components that the state law requires us to have. And then we will um, end up going to planning board for their review and uh, city council after that. The city is pretty aggressive in um, offering opportunities for new businesses to locate in, in uh, Missoula through MEP particularly, the Missoula Economic Partnership. Uh, they're also very focused on retaining the companies that are already here. So, I mean, that's uh, their focus. I think uh, as far as development services and my group is concerned, we are focused with uh, accommodating new development and redevelopment in the city and we're seeing a tremendous amount of that. That's a reflection of a growing, vibrant community and we're looking to continue to build on that. Folks' plan is going to be for 20 years from now. So in that same vein, we also have um, the boards behind us that are in the center are from a high school group. And it's um, a Hellgate High School class. And they picked up the concept of our Missoula with the different themes. And their teacher actually had them develop, uh, I think it was a semester-long project, about ways to implement um, based on the themes in our Missoula for 20 years from now. And so we personified Missoula to begin with, and they talked about what made Missoula what it is. What is it about living in this valley and with these fertile lands and at the hub of the valleys that has made Missoula what it is? What is it about the environment that brought people in, extraction industries, those types of things that brought people here, and what choices have been made to make Missoula look like what it is today? And from there we rolled into, all right, now it's your turn to make choices. Ten years from now, what do you want Missoula to look like? Because if you don't make those choices now, Missoula won't look that way. Um, well, I got involved with my teacher. I'm in um, Ms. Swanson's class at Hellgate, and she talked to us about Missoula, and it was really interesting. Um, and so we had to choose a project for school, and we were really interested in recycling. So um, my partner and I worked on this project, it was really great. So she really introduced us to it, and it's been great. Missoula city government is very open, very accessible, uh, very friendly, uh, very much wants the community to be a part of what Missoula is and what Missoula is going to be because that's, you know, there's no other way to look at it really. If you want your city to survive, you need to have the input of the community. I think that's something that we're seeing not just when we think about economic growth, but how to be resilient when it comes to our environment and our housing and our transportation systems. So that's really a big piece of um, learning from the past and just really trying to be prepared. Uh, with there's a lot of new development and a lot of new projects that have been announced and are underway uh, over the last couple of years, uh, we're seeing a great uh, trajectory in terms of the interest in doing development and in doing good development in town. Uh, our job, my job particularly, is to help accommodate that and get uh, you know great projects out of the ground that everyone can be proud of, that provide great housing and, uh, prov and provide great services for the folks who live in Missoula today and people who are maybe uh, interested in Mis moving to Missoula in the near future. All right, awesome. and there was that little nice. nice little piece about 
our Missoula. Yeah, that looks yep. cool. So that's going to basically affect the growth policy in Missoula and how we're going to um, adapt and grow here in Missoula for the next 20 years. Cool. Mm -hmm. They cool. do this every 20 years and our Missoula was their answer to yeah. our 20 year update and our policy of developmental that's services. That's awesome. It's nice to get the students involved too because you know they are our generation and hopefully a lot of them will live here. Yeah, and so, it's great. It, it really opened up the opportunity for yeah. a lot of the a couple high schools and mm -hmm. a high school teacher really jumped on board and anybody who is anybody could still jump on board. Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is go into um, our Missoula through the city of the Missoula website at www.ci.missoula.mt.us. <laughs> or you could uh, look it up on Google by typing in city of Missoula It'll and it should be the, the very yeah. first one. And of course, it's time for one of my favorite segments, it's Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys ready for some Hallmark or Bullmark? Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, here's the first one. And my voice just got louder because I'm closer to the microphone. Oh. Which totally makes sense. <laughs> All right. Science. <laughs> I don't know who's going to play this game today. <laughs> All right, ready? Hit it, ASAP. <sighs> Hannah Swenson, a creative and bubbly baker extraordinaire, is in a sleepy town in Minnesota where everybody knows each other and secrets don't stay hidden for long. <laughs> Hannah's Bake Shop, The Cookie Jar, that's what it's called, <laughs> um, is where mo much of the town's gossip happens along with some strong coffee. But after she finds her good friend and delivery driver shot dead in the alley behind her shop, <gasps> Hannah's I idyllic world is turned upside down as she investigates their murder. Some secrets get revealed, but not the ones she goes looking for. Can this stay sweet, or will things turn sh sour for S Miss Sweden? Sweeson, Swinson, Swanson, Swansonite, Samsonite. Okay, is, and this is um, the movie is called Murder She Baked. <laughs> I'll start with you, Noel. Is this a real movie or is this Bull I don't know. This is pretty funny. This is <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. Good. I'm going to say this is a real movie. Okay, what about I'm you? I agree, yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys are right. Yeah. You guys, yes. this is a real Hallmark movie. <laughs> and um, actually, this is the first part of the title. The second part of the title would totally give it away. What was it? The second part of the title was a uh, cookie cutter um, mystery. Oh, murder she baked. Oh, cookie cutter. Colon, a chocolate chip mystery <laughs> yes okay are you guys ready for the next one? Oh, that was good yeah. all right yeah. close-up time <laughs> Super hit it asap <laughs> darcy a phd candidate must let go of her logic when she finds a list of items to give away written by her late mother she never knew <gasps> with the encouragement of her enthusiastic new mentor nathan she attempts to return everything on the list and begin to encounter unexplainable parallels that lead her to see parallels. Yeah, oh, right. oh. yeah, lead her to understand the world's um, smallest things have the greatest meaning. And this is called a gift of miracle. So it's not about murder, but there's a mystery involved in it. Nice. So it's, it's a mystery. So it's like a mystery, but no murder. Not a murder mystery, just a mystery. Just mystery. a mystery of her late mother, and he returns items, and is like, oh, your mom was the, the greatest person ever. Oh, yeah, I hated your mom. And it's like, I used to love her so much. Is this a Hallmark original movie, or is this complete um, Scott made up Bullmark? Well... You know, he what asked you me saying? how to spell parallel this morning. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to go Bullmark. Oh, you're going to go Bullmark? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to agree, too. Well, you guys are wrong because it's an actual real movie. Ah! Oh! No! Because I replaced parallels um, from coincidence, oh. <laughs> and I just was like, I'll, I'll use parallels. Okay. And they'll throw them off, and then I'll ask Noel, and I'll trick her before you the didn't show. Trick me! <laughs> and oh yes, a gift of miracles is a Hallmark original mystery movie. And this is Mystery May month here. Yes, and At stuff. Hallmark. On Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> All right, so you can find out more about Hallmark or Bullmark by playing yourself by logging on to our website www.wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula and just play Hallmark or Bullmark and it will send you to your own version of it so you can play and get yeah. fooled by Scott <laughs> Bull and, will, and you can also like us on Facebook follow us on Twitter you can follow MCAT on Twitter you can follow you can like MCAT on Facebook all sorts of great stuff to get in contact with MCAT but if you do want to be on our show mm -hmm. you want to talk about an event or cause and you want to get involved with MCAT you can call us at 
542-6228, otherwise known as 542 M-Cat. 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 542-6228, M-Cat. Uh, it's like that one on um, that carpet cleaners commercial. 514-06-542 M-Cat. Your coffee's terrible, Scott. Your coffee's terrible <laughs> because I'm a 1960s yeah. husband yeah. and I, I'm bigoted. <laughs> Woman. Was that terrible? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad. All right. So um, our next show is Friday. I just want to yes. say thank um, Stefan. Yes. And, and Luke, Luke. For coming here from Blue Sky. That was awesome. Yes. ASAP really with his you. musical notes. Yes. Um, thank you. Noel with her events. <laughs> Lori for putting us on. Yeah. Thanks, Lori. <laughs> she makes this place run. She yeah, she she's a boss. Yeah, she is, <laughs> for sure. All right, so take it away, ASAP. For Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I know I'm not close. See you Friday, everyone.